Well, has the weight of disc brake bikes caught up with rim brake counterparts? And we've seen new technologies like EPS, which is expanded polystyrene, and also latex used to make a blank so they can make the carbon walls thinner, but still maintain the strength of the bike to get the weight down. But, and that's it, there is a but. So let's roll the intro and let's have a discussion on has disc brake bikes weight, or lack of, should I say, really caught up? Well, disc brake bikes and the manufacturers are really using some new technology to get the weight of the frames down. And they've pretty much achieved this with their EPS or expanded polystyrene technology. So the reality is, is yes, they have caught up and we're seeing disc brake bikes now around about 7.2, 7.4, which is really close to what the pros used to ride when they had rim brakes. So we're only about like 300 grams over the UCI limit. And this is actually really good that the technology is moving forward and they're actually getting those weights competitive or down to what they used to be. Now, the real issue here is, is that this technology they're using is not being trickled down yet to the lower model. So if you can afford to buy like a Durace bike or Super Record or the SRAM Exus with the top of the range frame and wheels, you're going to get a bike that really is competitive on weight to the old rim brake bikes used to be. Now, as soon as you drop down off those top tier bikes to the higher mid tier or, or the mid price bikes, they're not using those technologies like the EPS technology in the frames. And the weight of the bike jumps up considerably. And you find yourself, if you, you're looking at the models that are fitted with the Ultegra group sets or the next tier down, the weights are starting to push up to eight kilos or even higher depending on if you want to go down to a little bit of a cheaper frame or with cheaper wheels on or so forth. So when we look at the old days with the rim brake bikes, we used to be able to ride an Ultegra bike with rim brakes and the weight was still quite reasonable on them. Now if we look at prices, the prices of that second tier down, which is our Ultegra based bike group sets, the prices are really what the Dura Race bikes used to be because the prices have jumped up so much. We're now looking at around 13 to 15,000 US. And if we want that the second tier down, we're looking between seven to 10,000 US. So the prices are still extremely significant. And the second tier bikes are really what we're paying, which we used to pay for the first tier bikes three or four years ago, especially when it was a bit more competitive and you could always get prices of bikes or one that was going out of out of the year's model, you could get them for significantly discounted. Usually you might save about 30%. So what you could get a really good bike for was pretty reasonable. You could probably get like in Australia, and this is AUD, you could probably pick up a giant TCR, which was an Altegra fitted bike, for around about six to seven thousand Aussie, which would probably just be under five thousand US. But it appears those days are gone. So what we're really paying for, we're paying for a price now for a bike that we used to be able to get on the second tier bike, right? Uh, sorry, on the first tier bike on our Durace type bikes. Now we're having to pay that same money for a second tier bike of Altegra, and the bikes in those those categories are really up around about the eight kilo mark. So we're really looking at a bike now that is a kilo or over a kilo than the UCI limit. So in conclusion, yes, people can argue the latest disc brake bikes with the EPS technology definitely have got the weight to a competitive mark 
where they've got it very, very close to the UCI limit. And yes, you could probably argue you can make a rim brake bike, you know, for six kilos a lot below UCI, but let's just say we were going to race, so we wouldn't be able to use that bike anyway. It'd have to be 6.8. So we're getting the disc brake bikes to the legal limit. But a lot of people who do sports eaves or ride or are just keen cyclists generally don't buy the Duras, they buy the Altegra. The Altegra, you just see it around the most. Well, I do anyway in my part of the world. That seems to be the go-to group. It's the best bang for buck, for high performance, weight and everything else. And then they get that, they buy that bike out of the store, which comes with that next level down marking. So you might have, uh, you know, the, the SLX and then the next one down is the SL or whatever. And different manufacturers have different ways of labeling their models as they go down. And they might not get quite as good at carbon and so forth. But when it was in the rim brake days, it was pretty minimal as far as the weight goes. But with the new disc brake bikes, they're usually dropping out of the EPS technology to get down to the next tier. And you're also riding the Altegra, which is a bit of a heavier group set. And it's not just 30 or 40 grams heavier it's a bit more and they're all electric now so they're quite heavy so therefore you're riding a bike that's pretty heavy and i really have to argue for that for the mainstream enthusiast cyclist who's going to buy an altegra bike really the disc brakes are still too heavy you know as i said two or three hundred grams people go you know so what but once you get to a kilo it's not so much that the overall weight of the rider and the bike is the issue it's the bike starts to feel a bit sluggish. It feels a little bit harder to throw it around. It feels not as agile out of the cell. When you're climbing, it doesn't feel quite as agile. And you start to feel it once you start to putting on a kilo on the bike. Well, anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. Leave your comments down below. What's your thoughts on the second tier and third tier bikes that are on the market? And do you think that they're good value for money and versus the weight you're getting? Anyway, see ya.